organizing space that way. It's cool. I mean, it's cool. However you look at it, I mean, he lived so many years ago, what, six, seven hundred years ago, but still a good idea. And on the right, you can just see, if you can see, how those circles apply to the window. Now, let's just backtrack into circles. Spheres, circles, molecules, atoms, geodesics, soap bubbles even. They overlap, penetrate each other. We're moving into zero gravity, low gravity space. You guys are. Lunar habitats, a sphere, a cylinder, great pressure vehicles, easy to construct, easy to stack, circles. And the top right, if you can see it, have you seen that one before? Inflatable structure on the moon, you have a crawler laser focusing machine, fuses lunar dust, lunar dust on an inflatable, and you, then you take the inflatable away. They're already using that technique here in the US. There's a domes in, near Salt Lake City built with the same construction method. Domes are incredibly strong. I mean, nuclear strength. They'll withstand a ton of things. Uh, top left, uh, fish habitats, spherical. S organizing space with spheres and circles is important. But from spheres, you can create lattices, line structure. They triangulate. So if you connect the centers, you're going to get triangles, lots of triangles. You're going to get a very strong structural space, triangular space. Well, lattices, line patterns, if you like, these are all from that window arrangement. They're straight from that window arrangement. And as you can look at a lattice, like looking at cracks on a wall. And, and you can see things depending on your imagination. I mean, you can see things in it. Well, what you see in a triangulated lattice created this way is repeatable. It's, it's, it's a universe of structure. It's something you can calculate around stresses, dimensions. And you can see things in it. And my first application of that was uh, these books, Altair Designs. And we found that kids would look at the lattices and see things in them and color whatever they saw. And some people would see flowers, faces, patterns. But some people would see complete, you know, scenes, eagles, whatever. I mean, and then, so th these images here, I animated, but they are from kids' drawings. So it's what I was looking at. I was looking at the lattices, how the lattices organize space. And then I pull this stuff out. Hey, from your point of view, it could just be fun, but you could pull out something that you like or, or apply. So I asked myself a question, is if the Abbasid designers who built that window um, use circles, it's quite a complicated arrangement of circles. I mean, if you take quarters, dimes, and you put them on a table, you can make them close pack, triangulate, fit together, be compact. But you take this five different size circles in the window. So I was thinking, well, how, how did he create that structure? So then I thought, well, I'll write a program, came up with an algorithm, which allowed, I don't know if I can go back, but it allowed circles to move, change size, the algorithm, the program, looked for close packing relations. So those little circles that are growing and shrinking and moving, that's from a computer algorithm. And that particular start point created 17 different close packing arrangements. All you can use structurally. But this is two dimensions. I started to think about three dimensions. So same kind of algorithmic process. So this one started off with spheres, 
on one plane and they're moving. And I programmed this and it created seven close packing arrangements. And then I analyzed them. The second one, if you can see it, this one, the spheres, the circles are in whole number relationships. So the little one is one, the next size is two, and the middle one, the big one is three. One to two to three. What was fascinating was that the, this one, was the golden ratio. Anyone heard of the golden rectangle, golden ratio? Golden rectangle, considered by many as the perfect rectangle. I hate rectangles, but they think it's the perfect rectangle. They see it in the Parthenon, in the pyramids. They see it in Da Vinci's work. Uh, I'm not so sure. But anyway, look, Cabousier, the architect, he integrated it as a proportional structure within his work, within his buildings, within his paintings, a proportional structure. And you might have come across proportional structures, have you? Rationale of proportion, why make this this big, that big, why put that there or here? Well, Corbusier created a proportional system around this guy. But no one had discovered it before. Close packing arrangement of golden circles. So, Fibonacci. Anyone heard of Fibonacci? Um, monk, 12th century, can't remember. I don't know why. The guy was fascinated with rabbit, rabbit populations and how they grew. And he came up with this formula. And I won't try to go through the intricacies of it, but take one pair of rabbits, you'll get another pair. They breed in one month, another pair. And then it takes a month for a rabbit pair to be able to have another rabbit pair. And he came up with a number sequence. One, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen. See it's adding? One plus one, two, two plus one, three, three plus two, five. They use that model in the stock market. It's a predictive, what they call a predictive additive model. You can, you, you know, certain people follow stocks using that sort of Fibonacci model. The thing about Fibonacci is those two numbers, one to one, then two to one, then three to two, then five to three, they converge on the golden ratio, the golden rectangle. So there's a convergence. So you've got a, a convergence of number with form. And top right, that's Corbusier. Middle one, sunflower. Spirals one direction against spirals in another direction follow the Fibonacci sequence. So you've got a link with nature, proportion, number, mathematics, all in one go. Um, Salvador Dali used it. Um, so I continued with my algorithms. See how they change, see how they fill space. You can connect the centers of them. You create triangular lattices. And as much as you can see frogs or eagles coming out of those two-dimensional drawings, you can start to see them coming out of the three-dimensional space here. Then I went three-dimensional. Same algorithm, spheres moving, changing size, creating structure, filling space. Same logic. So this one on the left, that's the golden ratio filling 3D space in golden ratio proportions, precise. There's no fudging in that. And then there's so many. I started to program tons of them. But from, from them, can you see this? You've got the spheres, connect the centers. You've got lattice structures. You build up a whole complex of lattice structures. And from the lattice structures, just as with the two-dimensional designs, you can pull out form. And the forms are the forms you wish to pull out. You know, I, so I kind of being symmetrical in this case, I pulled out these forms. It's like chipping away at a block of marble, but the marble is organized internally. And this is one of the structures I pulled out. So it's a means. I, create, I took that window 